I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a thinking and communication question. Those who can do this question will get more than 90% marks in their test. The question here is, a mass on a spring is pulled towards the flow and released, causing it to move up and down. Its height in centimeter above flow after t seconds is given by the function h of t equals to 10 sine 2 pi t plus 1.5 pi plus 15. Sketch a rough graph of height versus time. Find the time t when height is 18 centimeter. You can pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestion. Now we are given the function h of t equals to 10 sine 2 pi t plus 1.5 pi plus 15. So my recommendation is factor out 2 pi and rewrite the expression. So we get h of t equals to 10 sine within bracket 2 pi t plus divide 1.5 pi by 2 pi, right? So 1.5 pi by 2 pi plus 15, right? So let's simplify this and rewrite. So we get 10 sine 2 pi t. So when you divide pi and pi cancel, half of 1.5 is 0 0.75. So we get plus 0 0.75. You can use calculator plus 15. So that is your equation. It is very important to write like this so that you know clearly what is the k value so that you can find the time period and uh, what is the horizontal translation. It is 0 0.75 to left. Perfect. Now from here k is equals to 2 pi, right? So k is 2 pi. So we can find time period t which is 2 pi divided by k. In this case 2 pi divided by 2 pi will give us a time period of one second, right? Time is in seconds. So that's the time period for us. We know this is a sine function and it has been translated uh, 0.75 units to the left. First part is sketch a rough graph of height versus time. And that is what I really like. So let's sketch this graph since we are starting with 10, which is kind of positive. So let me sketch a graph here. So we will draw sine function, right? So this is, let us say, the sine function, right? So, oh my God, I've sketched it. Okay, it doesn't matter. So, kind of, okay. It goes on and on like this, right? So here, what we notice is that 15 is the axis, right? So let me just draw the axis. Okay, let's draw it like this. Okay, that's fine. So I'll write some values on the side and we say, well, this is my 15, okay. And <coughs> it begins with uh, moving 0.75 to the left. So, so on the x-axis, this point should be minus 0.75. And well, before that, let's go to the maximum minimum. 10 is the amplitude, so maximum will be 10 plus 15, which is 25, and the minimum which will be kind of, let me just draw some dot here, five units, correct? And these units are in centimeters. So height is in centimeters. Okay. Now, time period is one, and since it has moved 0.75 left, uh, the sine wave really starts from minus. So let me kind of draw the axis now. So let me draw the axis. First the x-axis. So we are saying this is my x-axis. Okay, that's fine. And on this axis, this point is minus 0 0.75. So this is minus 0 0.75. Note, I haven't drawn the y-axis yet. I have to draw find 0 first, right? So that is horizontally translated left by 0.75. And the time period is 1. That means it repeats this point is 1 away from here. So if I add 1 to 0 
I get 0 0.25, correct? 0 0.25, correct. Half of 1 is 0.5, so this will be, and so each unit is 0.25 less, quarter is 0.25. Is that okay? So taking away 0.25, I get minus 0 0.5, and this is minus 0 0.25, and that seems to be our zero. Okay, so we will draw the y-axis here. Which is our zero, right? So this is this is the zero. So that is a good technique to draw. Now here, if you see, we have uh, like this going on. So so each quarter is, so this is 0 0.5 for us. This is 0 0.75, right? And this is one more. So this is kind of one for us, right? So from 0 to 1, we have one cycle. Do you see that part? And the cycle, of course, repeats. Perfect. That's fine. Now, since it is time after the spring is pulled, T should be actually greater than equal to zero. So that is a restriction, right? T cannot be negative for us. So we are actually interested in this part of the graph, right? It is kind of important to understand that part. <coughs> okay, now, so basically we are saying T is greater than zero. So this is our time in seconds. And we have h of t here, which is in centimeters. Perfect. Now this, I think, is a good representation. This point is 25. Here we have 15. And this is 5. Now I think I filled in most of the values, right? If some are left, you can always complete that. So sketch a rough graph of height versus time. So that seems to be fairly good enough. And let's make a note that this part helped us to draw, but really speaking our starting point should be uh, from here okay and forward perfect second part is find the t when height is 18 centimeter so that means i have to draw a line at 18 centimeter and then we'll figure out what is this height so 18 is more than 15 so that means somewhere here like this Do you see that? So this is my 18 centimeters. Let us say this is 18. Okay. So we are looking for these points. We are looking for these points as solution. So we know the solution is close to 0.25 higher side, less than 0.75. Kind of. From the graph, we get this kind of a solution. We need to find that solution. Correct. So let's calculate these values. I have very limited space to work with. Uh, so I'll use a different ink so that it doesn't mess us with that. So we need 18 centimeter. H of t is 18. So let me write 18 here. Equals to 10 times sine within bracket 2 pi t plus 0 0.75 plus 15, right? Now to find t, we will take away 15 then divide by 10. I'm doing two steps at the same time since I have less space, right? So, first take away 15, you get 3, right? Divide this 3 by 10, okay? So, you get sine of all this, which is 2 pi times t plus 0 0.75. Is that okay? Now, that gives us 3 divided by 10 is indeed 0 0.3, correct? So this angle, 2 pi times t plus 0 0.75, so should be equal to sine inverse of this, right? So 2 pi times t plus 0 0.75 equals to sine inverse of 0 0.3. You're working in radians. So your calculator should be in radians to calculate all this. Find sine inverse of 0.3 you get a value which is 0 0.30. So here we get 0 0.30 as our answer. Uh, remember one more thing, that whenever you're finding a value for sine, you get related acute angle, correct? So let me explain you this here. So what you got is the radian value, which is 0 0.3, so the acute angle. There's another solution to it. As you can see, there are two solutions. The second one will be 
pi minus 0 0.3, right? So the other one is pi minus 0 0.3. So uh, let me, uh, so sine inverse of this is, we didn't write the value. Let me write it down. So sine inverse of 0. Point is 0. 0.3046. Let me write 46 here, okay? Sine inverse of 0. 0.3 is point this, okay? Now, I'm saying that we have another value. So this value which we found is given to us. The other value is that principal angle, which is the pi minus alpha, is it okay? So that value also we should be considering. How much is that? So we will do uh, pi minus 0.3046. That gives us two point. So this is this much or pi minus 0.3046, which is 2.83699. Okay, so we get these two values. Now comes the very interesting part. So that is 2 pi times t plus 0.75 is equals to all this. We have to find the value of t. That means these two values which we are working on, we have to divide them by 2 pi and take away 0.75, correct? So let me divide this page into, we have very limited space here. So, okay, and then continue, okay. So basically to find t, I will do what? I say t equals to this value 0 0.3046, 0 0.3046, I'll divide by 2 pi, correct? and take away 0 0.75 is that okay and write its value so let's do that 0 0.3046 divided by within bracket 2 times pi equals to 0 0.048 something and I'll take away 0.75 from it so I get minus 0.7015. Do you see that? I get a negative value. Okay. With the other one also, we'll do the same calculation. This is t equals to 2.83699 divided by 2 pi minus 0.75. Okay. Now, that is to say 2.83699 uh, divided by within brackets 2 times pi equals to minus 0.75 equals to another negative value which is negative 0 0.2984. Now as you see we got two negative values. Now t should be greater than or equal to 0, not these negative values. Can you explain me this answer? That's very important to understand and that is why it is a thinking and communication question. So if you see your graph, let me extend this to kind of like this. You get these two points. Do you see that? So what we really got are these two solutions. Do you get the idea? That is what we got. But our real solution lies here greater than zero, right? So those values we can get by adding the time period of 1 to these values. Okay, so that is the whole thing. So if I add 1 to this, I get my real solution. So let me add 1 to the last one first. So plus 1 gives me 0 0.701, correct? So since I'm running out of space, I'm saying this point for me is this value plus 1, which is 0 0.701 or 0 0.7. Let me write this as 0 0.7 as my one of the solutions. The other one will be minus 0 0.7015 plus 1, right? So let me add 1 here also. So let me use another ink so that you don't really get. So if you follow this video in sequence, this won't be a problem for you. So let me add 1 to, so let me write 1 minus 0 0.7015 that is equals to, uh, let me write decimals, 0 0.2985, 0 0.2985. So this point is 0 0.298, right? So that's good enough. 
So that is this point. Do you understand? Point two nine eight. So around point three. Okay. So this is we can say zero point three. Is this point? So these are really the two first two solutions for us. The values will repeat every time since it's a periodic function, and you have to add one to each time to get the other values. Do you see that? So our answer is that t is equals to 0.298 right plus n where n is an integer because it repeats after every plus n and it is 0 0.7 uh, I'm just rounding this plus n where n belongs to integers because it is going to repeat after the time period which is 1 in this case I hope you understand and appreciate so these answers which we got negative we added one right to get the first positive set every time you add one you get this set so that becomes your real solution do not take the negative value since t has to be greater than or equal to zero i hope with this you understand now exactly how to solve these kinds of word problems and understand when we have real life situations and when time is greater than or equal to zero negative t values should not be reported I hope that helps. You can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.